Hi, Sushri. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. What about you? I'm good too. Thank you. So can you tell me something about yourself? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Sushri. Uh, I have all total uh, five years of experience in uh, manual and automation testing. As part of manual, uh, I have worked in functional testing, regression, and uh, retesting, SIT testing. Mm -hmm. And as part of automation, I have uh, worked in Tosca automation tool. I have worked in Selenium uh, in, uh, in a Catalan Studio tool. Mm -hmm. And I have knowledge of Java, uh, Cucumber, and uh, SQL and uh, selenium yeah yeah mm -hmm. also i have worked in uh, uh i uh, have as part of bot tracking tool i use uh, we use jira mm -hmm. and uh, repository we use git github yeah okay and what do you know about agile yeah agile uh, yes uh, we are in a two week sprint we are using agile methodologies and as uh, we are getting uh, the user stories, uh, the very first thing is we should go uh, all the requirements in user stories and accordingly uh, we'll be writing the test cases, test tips, mm -hmm. test scenarios in uh, Jira. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, execute, we can do the execution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's say if there are only two people in your team, right, including you, and let's say other member is on leave. So how will you manage the work? Yeah, uh, so in that case, uh, we should uh, see the priority, mm -hmm. the complexity. And uh, so while creating our test cases, we must have defined our test cases according to priority, mm -hmm. complexity. So we need to focus on those. First, accordingly, so first we should check uh, the priority one mm -hmm. test cases and uh, what are the more complex test cases those will be uh, executing first and also we should check for bugs if in box are fixed those also we need to uh, test first so yeah accordingly yeah we'll work out okay right so you have experience in automation right yes now i'm sharing my screen so this is a real time scenario okay is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, let's say whenever you launch one browser, so there are multiple browser windows getting popped up or multi or pop-ups are coming, right? Now, yeah. you there is a setting available in the browser that you can turn off the pop-up. But as a part of testing, you need these pop-ups to be available, right? So, sometimes yeah. we have to allow these pop-ups and sometimes multiple windows will come. So, how will you automate them? Pop-ups, I think it will come under iframes mm -hmm. or are these alerts? Are these alerts or iframes? Uh, no, no. Iframes will not be there. So iframes and frames are something in which you will have to yeah. get the count of those windows and you will have to switch to them, right? Okay. So yeah, these, these will come under the... alerts? Yeah, yeah. These are pop-ups, alert kind yeah. of messages you alert. get. Mm. So alerts we have... Uh, uh, we can accept the alert either we can accept or we can dismiss mm -hmm. uh, with, yeah uh, okay and what method will you use to automate them switch to dot alert driver dot switch to dot alert mm -hmm. okay so dot accept or dismiss mm -hmm. right yeah. okay so driver dot switch to dot alert right yeah. So that you will get when you are getting alert. Driver kind of. dot uh, with two. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So if you get some kind of alert message with uh, X with yes and no option, so you will use accept or dismiss kind of methods, right? If you get such kind of multiple windows or pop ups, then you mm -hmm. can use driver dot switch to dot window handle ID, right? So you will be to which window you have to switch, right? So yeah. Then... Before that, we need to yeah we need to the, we need to uh, uh, access the IDs hmm. uh, with the window handle. Right. Yeah. So we can enter that here and we can do it. Yeah. Right. 
So you can keep the main windows handle ID in a string, right? And then this is how you can declare about driver.get window handle. And after working on all the windows, you can switch back to the main window dot window in the bracket you can mention as main tab. Okay, so that's how you can automate these window based scenarios. Yeah, these we perform mainly if we have two tabs, more than one tabs. Yeah, that, yeah, more than, than one, window. more than one pop ups, more than one windows. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, right. okay, now let's go to the next scenario. So assume my screen is visible, right? Yes. Yeah, assume you have Nokri.com portal. Okay. And you what you have to do is you have to upload 10 resumes or you can say CVs of 10 different profiles, right? All those profiles data is mentioned in an Excel file. So there are separate columns like names, file names are there, right? Then uh, employee IDs are there, right? So how will you automate this scenario? Okay, from Excel sheet, we need to retrieve those data. Yes, yes. Mm. What will be your approach? This is an automation based question, right? Uh, yeah, as per my knowledge, we can use Apache POI. Mm, yeah, perfect, perfect. That's a good thought process. You'll use Apache POI. What else? Yeah, form to XML, we can uh, uh, define those dependencies and we can use these. We can retrieve uh, names, file names, columns, so mm. we can do and uh, Cucumber, I think using Cucumber also, we can do. I never tried it, but I think mm -hmm. we can do using Cucumber. Okay. Why do you need Cucumber in this scenario? Um, uh, I have never tried actually. I've never come across Excel to retrieve. So, mm, what else we can do? Excel. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. In Selenium, uh, we have one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, file. We can give the path where the file is existing, and we can uh, specify the file name. But I'm not sure if we can retrieve because I have never come across. Okay, so what will you do here is you will go for a data driven framework. Okay, okay. what happens yeah. in a data driven framework? You have an Excel file, it's an external entity from which you will read the data based on number of rows. For example, 10 resumes of 10 profiles, so 10 rows will be there, or some three to four columns will be there, right? So you will be reading the data, you will be creating that object of workbook, right? And you will be reading from each and every cell, each and every row, what data you have to do. And now you will log in into this particular Nokri.com website. You will launch this website by uh, navigate method is there, right? Then you have to open that particular profile in which you have to upload the CV. Now, whenever you are uploading a CV, again, you will get some kind of a pop-up option with yes or no, right? But that will be a Windows-based pop-up, right? So how do you handle Windows-based pop-ups? So in order to automate Windows-based pop-ups, either you can go for SQLy or you can go for PowerShell scripting or you yeah. can go for uh, mm, robot keys, right? Okay. okay. Which can click on yes or no. Right. Yeah. So, so these are the various ways and then you can just upload once uploading is done, then maybe one icon you will get or some status you will get as submitted or uploaded that okay. you can put in assertion. Right. So that's how you can automate this scenario. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. I have one question. Can we do it with Cucumber? 
you can do with cucumber there is no issue but the only point in cucumber is you are creating a feature file mm -hmm. yeah what is the significance of having a feature file such that non technical people can use oh, yeah, yeah in the form of given when then the code as such also you will be writing the same in the step definition file yeah. right and yeah. again in cucumber you will be reading the uh, data from the excel right so it's good to go for data driven framework only if you will use cucumber you will have to take mm -hmm. care of uh, both the things feature file and data driven so it will be a combination of bdd framework and data driven framework okay. but if you just take data driven framework and create an end to end solution using data driven framework it would be easier for you for the automation team to maintain also okay yeah correct okay now how will you identify the test scenarios which are suitable for automation uh, yeah uh, so um the very first thing is we should be using the we should be executing them all the scenarios manually so mm -hmm. that will get all the functionalities the processes how the steps how it goes and all mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so fast we should choose which which takes very less time mm. and some of the scenarios are there for that for which we need uh, the sms's emails mm. otp so those kind of uh, scenarios we should avoid mainly for automation mm. Mm. and um, yeah so yeah so those which are taking very less time mm. those will be giving the priority first then again uh, uh, next set of we can uh, next uh, set of uh, scenarios we can take which all are taking little more time so according mm -hmm. time to time we can uh, differentiate we can yeah okay. write those uh, scripts all right so see whenever you have to select the test scenarios if you have to identify which test scenarios are eligible or a perfect candidate a good fit for automation then what will you do is you will first take the test cases which cover the business aspect of the application which cover the um i would say the oh, it should cover the requirements yeah correct yeah so every test case will be covering the requirements but which are the test cases which will cover the higher priority requirements for example if you take an uh example of e-commerce website then payment gateway is a very critical feature that okay. should be working otherwise there is no point of having that e-commerce website so that should be automated first right but again in that case we were getting otp so that was we can't test right payment. right so when you will get otp in case of some uh, card related options correct right what you can do is you can have a word with the development team or you can use some of the options payment options in which otb is not coming for example you can uh, generate a random dummy digit number with yeah. the help of which you can just check whether the payment is happening or not dummy yeah. payment card details you can enter right yeah yeah Correct. it's not necessary that you do a real world testing right definitely in production environment you will be testing with one particular product mm -hmm. but what you have to test for now the functionality is up and running or not yeah right right you can also have a word with the development team that they can suppress that particular otp feature in the test mm -hmm. environment right so various mechanisms are there so the point was how will you consider the scenarios for automation right so yeah high priority scenarios should be taken first repetitive task should be taken first because if the tasks are repetitive in that your team members energy is getting drained too often so that should be taken care first third is the scenarios which are taking a lot of time let's say if some scenario is taking three to four hours right why should you do it manually if you feel it can be done automated you can automate it you can keep it for nightly run in the morning when you will come you will have those results with you right so that's how you can automate okay now hmm. 
do you perform API testing? Yeah, I have used Postman. Mm -hmm. Okay. So which are the different assertions that you are using in Postman? Um, I don't have much knowledge actually, but I have uh, done gate boot, post okay. and delete. Those okay. four I have performed. So, I have not done much right, things. Right. No worries. So though, what are those? Those are methods, right? Related to the API, mm -hmm. right? There are different assertions. For example, one of the assertion is response assertion. Whether you are getting that particular okay. 200 responses or not. 201 as a response code That's or not. Awesome. Right. So various assertions are there in Postman. Right. Okay, what is the difference between smoke and sanitary testing? Smoke, as far as I know, developers perform. Sanitary uh, testers perform. Smoke, uh, once a build is uh, uh, formed, so the developers will be doing the smoke testing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the full functionality is developed, so they will do the smoke testing based on the some little little parts of uh, the uh, parts of the functionality they will test. They won't test the whole uh, thing. Uh, so after they perform the smoke testing, it will come to uh, uh, testers as sanity. Mm -hmm. So again, we'll be uh, creating sanity scenarios and uh, we'll be testing again uh, the main uh, main uh, functionalities, not like the whole functionality. We'll be taking the main as as in uh, priorities. Which okay. are uh, uh, priority wise the main uh, functionality those will be testing as part of sanity. Mm -hmm. So after the sanity is executed, then uh, we'll be giving green signal to the uh, developers so that uh, mm -hmm. okay. they can uh, use the environment. Yeah. So what is smoke testing? So smoke testing is a high level testing that you will perform. Right. Right. whether the build is good to go for further testing or not what is sanity level of testing so in sanity testing you will perform deep level of testing in which you will be testing various cases various functionality various features right so smoke testing is again shallow testing while sanity testing is a deep level of testing Every time, whenever you get a build, you will be starting with the smoke testing. Okay, so now let's come to this scenario. Just a Okay, now let me share my screen. Just a Okay, now this is a banking website, okay, in which once you enter the customer ID and you click on proceed button, then you would be able to move further. Bag button mm -hmm. is also enabled. If you click on, uh, if you enter customer ID, if you click on proceed and then you will get back button also. If you again click on back button, you will be redirected to this particular page. So can you tell me high level test scenarios? How will you test this website? Or you can, how will you test this functionality? Okay. The first thing is, uh, if the customer ID field is visible or not. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, 
<clears throat> if you are entering uh, wrong customer ID, it is throwing any uh, error or not. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, uh, the next thing is, now we should check the proceed button, the back button, the I mean the validation of proceed button and back button. And uh, then yes, uh, what is the gate customer ID? I mean, before mm -hmm. uh, so entering the customer ID, we should click or... Yeah, so this is if someone forgets the customer ID, right? Okay. Then they can click on this uh, link. It will ask email address or some kind of mobile number okay. wherein the OTP will go okay. and the customer ID, temporary customer ID okay. will be given to them. Okay. Uh, so that functionality also we can check if we're clicking on get customer ID, whether it is switching to some other window and asking for uh, email ID and uh, OTP and all those process also we can check. And also the info button, uh, we can validate mm -hmm. if uh, showing the arrow, if it is showing some or clicking, mm -hmm. clicking on the arrow, if it is showing the information right. or not, right. the customer ID. Yeah, if we're clicking on OK, if it is again uh, going back to the same page or not. Mm -hmm. And okay. if we're pressing back button, mm -hmm. uh, if it is coming back to the same page or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, what can you tell me the negative test scenarios for this functionality? Yeah, uh, so one thing is we should put, we should check the wrong customer ID. Mm -hmm. If we're putting wrong customer ID, if it is throwing any error or not. Mm -hmm. The first thing is that. Second, uh, without customer ID, uh, the proceed button should not be enabled. Mm -hmm. If we're entering correct customer ID, then only it should be enabled. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and if we're pressing, if we're uh, entering wrong customer ID, and the proceed button is enabled and if you're clicking on that if it is wrong customer id is wrong it should throw an error mm -hmm. that also we can check right so you will check with an invalid customer id you will check with a customer id which is not active you will check with yeah. a, a customer id which has got expired you will check with yeah uh, also also customer ID should be in number format. We can check with characters, uh, other I mean alphabets, mm -hmm. symbols. With those also we can verify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you perform non-functional testing? No, I never. Okay. Okay. What do you know about regression testing? Uh, regression uh, we perform in mainly uh, after the bug fixing is done by the developers. Mm -hmm. So the one cycle of execution will be done. Mm -hmm. All the bugs will be fixes, fixed. So after that, uh, we'll, be done, we'll be performing the regression testing. I mean, the whole functionality will be testing again to check whether, whether uh, after the bug fixing, any other functionalities are impacted or not. Correct, correct. How will you handle risk in your project? Risk in the sense? Mm -hmm. from... Risk in the sense, let's say, if some user story is assigned to you for testing. Okay. okay. And uh, while you have given estimation as seven days. Okay. Now it has been two days has passed already out of seven days, but still you have not got that particular release or that particular functionality to test. The you, have, you are not receiving the stable builds, right? So it's a kind of a risk situation because you need seven days, but two days have already passed away. You haven't got that particular thing to test or that particular feature available for testing, right? Some issues with the development, some issues with the deployment. In short, you haven't received that feature for testing. So it's a risk 
you you might not be able to complete in the seven in next five days right as per okay. the commitment given so it's a risk so how will you deal with this risk uh we we can try uh, as much as possible in next five days mm -hmm. if uh, something is coming from developer i mean this feature little feature or little functionality has been built mm -hmm. so accordingly we can test or else we can uh, check with our team leader manager to uh, uh to uh, move it to the next sprint mm. so, okay so to move it to the next sprint right yeah so when so will you communicate with your leads or managers that this needs to be moved to the as soon as possible as soon as possible yeah, as soon as possible yeah right right yeah. what else will you do hmm. so so the first two days i am not getting it right Mm, so, yeah, yeah. You didn't got you didn't get that feature for testing. So yeah, it's daily a risk. Will be having, mm. Yeah, daily will be having the DSM right in yeah. Ajay. Mm. So in daily staff meeting, we can. Uh, you mm, need to highlight. Highlight. We can highlight that uh, thing to our uh, team lead, mm. and also with our colleagues. So again, uh, if it is available the next day, mm. uh, so. We have team members, we can collaborate with each other, we can coordinate with each other and we can try to finish as much as possible or else we can move it to next sprint with the uh, allowance of our team lead manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Great. So can you give me a defect example with high severity and low priority? Hmm. Severity is high, but priority is low. Okay. Uh, if any login page, we are entering username, password, hmm. and it is getting logged in. Hmm. But the page uh, is not showing according to, uh, I mean, according to the user story, according to the requirement. Mm. It should show one page, but it is showing another page. Mm. So in this case... Uh, sorry, sorry. Can you please come again? It was showing one It page. is showing one page. Mm. After logging in, it is showing one uh, window, but mm. the window is not according to the requirement i mean what we are searching for mm. the window is not that window okay then it's a clear cut bug right you are seeing a window which should not be there the window is there but it is not according to the requirement i mean the, it should be a like a bank page mm. but it is either blank or it is some parts are missing in the page mm. Okay, so, so what you can do in this scenario is you can tell that there is a page in the application in which you are getting 500 internal server error. But that page is not that much used widely by the customers or it might be used after two months, right? Then it's a high severity issue, but priority is low because most of the users and users are not interested in that page so priority is low but severity is high because we are getting an internal server error right okay yeah so that's it uh, sushri for this interview thank you so much for coming on our channel and wish you all the best for your career thank you so much yeah